Hey everyone, it's John and today we're going to be doing some more network automation and in this video we're again going to be looking at Nornia but this time we're just going to be focusing on how to create a simple archive of your running configurations. Now you can do this quite easily with many many devices. The advantage of using Nornia here is because of the parallelization like I say. Nornia can do this very very quickly so in this scale in which I'm demonstrating the eight devices you're not really going to notice much of a difference from say using NetMiko or Napalm or Ansible or whatnot but as you scale out Nornia's efficiency becomes more and more apparent so that's really what we're going to be focusing on today effectively I'm just going to give you two scripts I've got the script in two different formats and you can pick what one you like and that's pretty much going to be it I'm basically just giving you this video to share two scripts with you um, and I'll run through just how I wrote them as best I can so it makes some sense to you if you want to try your own. Okay, doc, so that's the kind of lineup for the video and let's just kick on and do it. Okay, now, so let's go and look at the scripts. So just as before, if you've been following from the previous videos, we've got our host.yaml, groups.yaml and our config.yaml. Just briefly have a look at them. Just our IP addresses, username, password, effectively a map of our topology. The groups is just simply platform iOS and the config yaml just tells Nornia where to find these files okay host is in this path and groups in this path again I've taken the defaults out to simplify things ordinarily do have that but we'll get to that in a later video so let's look at the actual scripts then the first one I've got is archive one now just as before we're importing uh, from Nornia import init Nornia uh, from Nornia plugins task import network and that's so we can use a uh, napalm which we'll be using to actually get the configuration but also importing the print results so we can print the results out we're also importing the write file module that will allow us to actually write a config file based on uh, what we're actually grabbing from the configurations we've also imported from date time import date that is so we can actually append the date to the names of the files depending on when we're on the script. So if we run it on the 24th of August, it's going to have 24th of August in the actual name of the either directory or um, the file name, depending on which script we use. Okay, so that's the reason for that. And pathlib allows us to create new directories because if I just try to specify the directory path as maybe a date time and the directory does not exist, the script will fail and say, listen, the path you try to specify does not exist. By using pathlab, we can actually create the directory by using the mkdir method, okay? So if we follow down, we're now on to the backup configurations. This is the function we're creating. And we've created this variable called configdir. The name of this is going to be config-archive. That's going to be the name of the first directory we're going to create. If you want to change this, you can just edit that name. It's just a simple string. Below that, we've created a variable called device underscore dir. That is going to be within the config dir, which effectively means it's going to be within this folder, the name of this, followed by a hyphen to denote a new folder and task.host.name. That is effectively telling Nornia to look in the host.yaml file and take out the name of the device. So in the case of R1, it will be config archive forward slash R1. When it iterates to R2, it's going to be config archive forward slash R2, so on and so forth. Now we get to pathlib.path, .path. we're effectively saying if this doesn't exist, this um, directory, do an mkdir, okay, if you know Linux that basically means make a directory, okay, and it basically means here is if it doesn't exist, make it exist, so i.e. if you don't see it, create it. Same again here, the exact same thing, just for the device name, so r1, if r1 directory doesn't exist, create it, okay, same thing. Now we're creating the variable r, we're effectively telling non task.run and we're using the networking dot napalm get module which is effectively using napalm and the getters we're using is the config okay this is the value we're giving it which basically means get the running configuration then we go on and effectively specify the task dot write that's what we're going to be using this module here uh, we're going to be using the content is going to be the result method of the variable we've created here okay so effectively we're saving the actual output of the running configuration file okay and then we're going to be putting it in this path the file name here is we've had to create uh, this has to be a string okay you can't actually use um functions or whatnot it has to just be like this string so i'm taking the device dot dir which i've created up here okay and i'm converting it into a string by the str okay then i'm having a hyphen uh, sorry a slash not a hyphen a slash and i'm now using the date time this is effectively 
convert them today's date into a string and then appended it to a .txt. This might be confusing, but I think once you see the script actually execute, you'll start to be able to re reverse engineer it in your head and see, okay, this does make sense. Effectively, all it's going to do is create a folder called uh, config.archive. Within that, we're going to have the device name and then appended to that, we're going to have the date.txt for that device, okay? And again, we're just initializing Nornir, telling it where to find the configuration file, which effectively tells it where to find the host file and the groups file and so on and so forth. And that is in the config.yaml file you saw earlier. Then we're going to have this variable result, which is just nr run. And we're effectively just saying run that function we just created, which was all of this stuff here, and then print out the result, okay? So let's go and run archive one. And what I want to kind of impress upon you is just how fast um, Nornir is. Now again, you're not going to really see the full, the full acceleration of Nornir on a scale of eight devices, but if you had, say, a thousand devices, this is a very, very quick way to archive your entire network. So let's have a look at the script. So like I say, this is the first format. I've got two separate formats for this, so we'll just run the first way to do it. And we'll have archive one. And we'll just hit enter. And as you can see, Nornir is just blasting through this with a uh, breakneck speed. It's just going right through all devices and archive and everything, okay? So this is why you want to be using this. Almost done. There we go, that's us finished. So now we'll see we've actually created this directory called config archive. If we go in here, we do an ls, each device has a directory of its own. This is the first format you can have this in. So we could have r1, okay? And now in this folder, it's just going to have the date plus uh, the date appended to .txt, which you're going to actually have the configurations in it. So every time you run through this, if you did this tomorrow, the date would therefore be the next day, so on and so forth. Okay, so if I just cat that, or rather I'll less it actually, so you can see it gradually. And this is the configuration of R1. Okay. Put all the random stuff on this for... R2's got one here, again, it's got the date, R2. I'll tell less it, why am I doing that? It's a bit easier to see, isn't it? So just some, I'll just exit out that. So that's the first way you can have the format, if you like it, in the style of having the devices as directories and each, um, each actual text file has got the date on it. Or, the second way we can do, I'll just quickly explain this one, if we have vim archive 2. This is just kind of inverting that process. So effectively we're doing the same thing once we get down here. The difference is the folder is actually going to be the date. So we're going to have a folder called, say, whatever today's date is, the 30th of January 2020. And within that folder we're going to have 8 files, okay? And then the next day we're on it, we'll have the next day and within that folder we'll have the eight files for the eight devices, okay? So we're effectively saying date.dir, config.dir, and again making directory. And once we get to the file name, we're taking the the actual date this time and appending it to the host name .txt. So it's the, effectively it's going to be r1.txt, r2.txt rather than have the date. So let's just go back here and we'll actually run I'll just remove that entire archive for now, so we will just go back clean. I R M minus R config archive it is. There we go. So if we go and do Python three archive two. We'll see that Nornia is going to just blister through all the configurations again, grab them all and put them into a text file. But again, this time we're going to be seeing it in a different format. We're going to have the date first, followed by the devices within that folder. Now 
And there we go. So if we go into config archive, oh, we now see that it's the date rather than have the device, the, the, a bunch of devices. And if we go into that folder, we're going to see a bunch of um, text files, each with the router. So if I did say less R3, this is R3's one. And if I did say less R8, this will be R8's. So that's the second format. I personally, I think I like the second format better to be honest with you, but I thought what I would do is I'd give you the option um, and I'm going to put both of these up in my GitHub. So if you want to just deploy them, you can, you can modify them, change the names if you want. And that's pretty much it. Yep, so that's pretty much the end of the video. I just wanted it to be quite a short one. I've got a few days off, so I'm going to try and make some more videos soon. I want to get one out on um, more advanced filtering with Nornir and I also want to be doing one uh, just effectively using Git to help you roll back and repair your runbooks, okay? So that's the end of the video. Thanks very much and I'll see you guys soon. Bye bye.